Rachel, thank you so much for coming to Goshen for Riverbend Film Festival and congratulations you on much. your Oscar win. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a bit wow. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, everyone, I think everyone who um, is a fan of what you guys do, it feels like so connected and proud of the work that you guys are creating. Oh, and thank just, you very much. Um, we're thrilled that you're here and um, congratulations also being an honoree. Uh, for uh, Riverbend Film Festival. We're very happy to be here. Thanks for having us. So you, you, and, um, you have been working for quite a few years in the industry. Um, so you have this incredible success <coughs> with The Silent Child. Um, you're going to be moving out to do other things as well. Um, what got you to this point? Um, did you start out as an actor? Yes, I did. Um, yeah, I, I started off... I started acting when I was eight years old. So. Um, it's, it's been in my life for as long as I can remember, really. Um, and then, I guess, uh, through personal reasons, I got involved with the deaf community. And my lovely dad lost his hearing very suddenly. And I, that's what made me put pen to paper, really, was my involvement with the deaf community and seeing the struggles that the deaf community face, particularly deaf children, actually, and in access to education, which sort of made me put pen to paper. And that's how we got here. But I definitely started just as an actor, yeah. That's fantastic. Now, um, you have um, performed as an actor in the UK mm -hmm. and then also in LA. Yes. Um, yes. And um, are you represented? In, do you have one representation or are you represented in both countries? I'm represented in both countries, mm -hmm. yeah. And I did switch it both for three seasons here. Um, not here, but in, it, <laughs> it filmed in uh, Santa Clarita, just outside Los Angeles, uh, just outside Hollywood. Right which is very crazy for a, for a British actress to come over here and work in Hollywood, it's so weird. Um, but that was great fun, I did it for, for two and a half years, so have representation in both. Although, never, never call America home, it's all, England's always home. Sure, yeah. yes, yes. I, I don't know if everybody would even call LA home, because everyone's a transplant, Exactly, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think it's um, a funny town. You wrote an amazing screenplay, <clears throat> and that was your first if, am I correct? This is your first screenplay? Yeah, it was the first thing. I, yeah, first thing I've ever written. It's kind of a bit crazy. Um, Give it was, us a little backstory on on just the process itself. Yeah, it was really more the story um, that, that made me write it, and mm. it was more that I felt very passionately about this particular subject. Uh, I felt that it was underrepresented. I felt that it was something that needed to be said. It's a story that we haven't heard before from this this perspective, um, and. I just felt compelled to write it, really. It sounds a bit cheesy, but I just felt very, very compelled and thought, well, I'm going to do it, and even if it's rubbish, it doesn't matter, because I'm going to just have a crack at it anyway. Yeah. Um, and we just won an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, you can, I mean, it's obvious that it's coming from a place of passion, of knowledge, um, something else really close to you, and that's why you, you have the Oscar, obviously. It, it, uh, it was very clear. Um, and you work with um, some people who are very close to you. Um, tell us about some of the collaboration that you uh, you like to, to incorporate in your storytelling. Um, do you mean in terms of our crew? Yeah, in terms of your crew and, and your hometown, how... Oh, sure, yeah. sure. So, um, <clears throat> well, the director of the project is my fiancé. <laughs> so that's very close to home. Uh, and I think the, the good thing about collaborating with Chris was that he understood the story and understood my passion for the story and how I wanted it to be told and was totally on board um, and, to and actually just shared the same vision of how we wanted it to be told, which was great. Um, and then we shot the movie in a, in a tiny place called Stoke-on-Trent in, in England, which is in the middle of Stoke-on-Trent, closest cities are sort of Birmingham and Manchester and it's like smack bang in the middle of the two. Um, it's very small, it's, our, it's my hometown, Chris grew up only 20 minutes away. Um, all our crew we'd worked with in some capacity before, bar a couple of crew members which we, we got uh, really close to the wire, but most of the crew had worked together before, which was great. Chris has a, a small production company, Slick Show Reels, and we got the crew um, from various areas of his production company. So we'd all worked together, and it was a real together kind of can-do attitude that got the movie made. And, um, and also what was nice, we, the house that we shot the film in, which was obviously the family home of Libby and her family, 
and um, that was our location but it was also our home and our for, for 10 days because we had such a tight budget so we all the crew and cast lived in the house we ate in the kitchen and then we cleaned the kitchen and that became the set and then we cleaned the set and that became our dinner area again and, and vice versa because we didn't have a very big budget so it really felt like a, a family project <laughs> that's really interesting it, it, probably through that experience you guys that came through with the project and telling the story because you were living it. I, I, I never knew that anecdote to, yeah. to this process. That, that's really interesting. That's really cool. Thank you. Yeah, mm. we, we, um, we, I mean, we did it to, for money saving. Right. You know, we did it because we, we, we didn't have a budget, obviously, uh, or not a very big budget. Um, but actually, it was one of the best parts about it because you couldn't escape it. We were really in this sort of film bubble for like 10 days because nobody could actually physically go anywhere. And where we shot was in the middle of nowhere. So we didn't have, even have phone signals. So <laughs> it that's, was a very concentrated um, time. That's, that's amazing. That's, that's a really cool story to, for people to hear, uh, especially you know, other young filmmakers like yourself that have a passion to tell stories. Sure. Um, <clears throat> what, what advice do you have? Uh, for other people who don't think they're a writer and they think they're an actor or they don't, I mean, you know, a producer, like uh, for the process itself, what, what I mean, would you I say? I feel so underqualified to give anyone advice. Um, <laughs> I, As you receive the Oscar. I mean, but uh, well, <laughs> I, it's still my first project. Um, but uh, but I, I think my advice to anybody would just be give it a go. Um, just do it, you know, and, and just create. I think if you've got a, I think you have to really care about the story that you're trying to tell. Um, as particularly when you're starting out and it's your first project or even your first few projects, but I think particularly on a short, you have to really care because there's never going to be any financial gain. There's never going to be any, any of that kind of thing. You don't set out thinking that there's ever going to be any payoff. Um, you just set out because you want to write that story. So I think you have to really care about it because the tough days where the budget's tight and it's cold and you don't really want to be doing it, that, that's what's going to see you through those days. So I guess just pick something that you care about really and go for it. Yeah, that's great. Now, speaking of um, the benefits that are reaped after you have a successful film, uh, <laughs> what, what, what is the future of The Silent Child? I know that you're doing special screenings right now, mm -hmm. um, but what, for, for American audiences um, in this area, um, outside of the film festival, where could they possibly see The Silent Child in the future? So, um, in the future, The Silent Child will be back. It was originally on Amazon Prime for a short time. It was also on Google Play and uh, iTunes. And it's been taken off because we had some issues with the subtitles, so it will be back on there very soon. Um, so they'll be able to watch it there. Uh, but it all, we're just so overwhelmed by the response, really, because it's now all, it's all over the world. We just, we just had it confirmed that it's in 20 movie theatres in New Zealand, um, free of charge for the deaf and hard of hearing community and just the public. So it's great. Um, and I guess the aim is to just <clears throat> keep the dialogue going and, 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 and you know, l uh, allow as, as much, a, a bigger, wider audience as possible to see yeah. the movie, I guess. Absolutely. It seems like there's a momentum with the deaf and hard and hearing uh, a, a community when it comes to entertainment. Um, so we have The Silent Child, um, uh, uh, Stephen Susco's film that's playing tomorrow evening. Uh, they cast a deaf actress as well. And yeah, then, yeah. of course, the success of um, Quiet Place. So there's like a lot of stuff happening. What, what are your thoughts on, on that? Well, that's great. And that was the Oscars this year, we had Baby Driver, um, which had a deaf character. We had uh, The Shape of Water, which was a new character <laughs> communicating through sign language. So it really felt like a great time. Um, and there certainly feels like there's more of a presence now than there has been. Um, and that's great. I mean, that's exciting. And that's, uh, you know, it, it's certainly where we want to see it in the future. So I guess now, we, there's momentum, it's just about continuing the momentum, uh, you know, and I think that's everyone's responsibility, uh, mm -hmm. that have been moved by the story or that believe in this and think that, that, that it should be, um, that this kind of subject should be seen in the mainstream audience more, then we all have a responsibility to keep those dialogues going and to, you know, to make sure it continues. That's great. And so with that, um, the future of The Silent Child, it, they, is there, uh, there was some talk about um, having some support to create a feature film? That's right, yes. We are in very, very early stages of, a, of the feature film. And um, feature film obviously um, takes, takes, takes a little bit of time um, to get it right, and as it should. Um, but yes, we're, we're, we're making the silent child into a feature. I think the general consensus has been that people are interested in what happens next and where the characters go. So. Obviously. <laughs> um, and uh, 
Rachel Shenton, the actor, do you have any other projects beside, or are you, are you uh, fully enveloped with uh, slick reel films and, and The Silent Child right now, or are you diversifying some of your work? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm, I'm an actress. I'm, I'm, I will be uh, doing a movie actually at the end of the year, um, which is really exciting. Um, and I'm, I'm always sort of working, doing other projects. But I think for Chris and I at the moment, The Silent Child is our feels like our baby, and what we need to, what we really need to be be doing. But there's always time to do other things, which is nice. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I can't tell you how thrilled we are to have you here. And, and congratulations on being an honoree this year at the Thank River you. Bend Film Festival. Goshen is thrilled to have you oh. and, um, and uh, gets best of luck with everything you guys do. You are an incredible storyteller and writer. Thank and um, I'm so glad that you just did it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Thank you.